Let's take a look at SSE Edit. Head on over to Nexus Mods and download SSE Edit. This will be downloaded manually. Open up your Modding Hub folder in a window and beside it, your Downloads folder. We will take a look at installing SSE Edit and go through the basics. In your Downloads, drag and drop the zip file into your Modding Hub folder. In your Modding Hub, right click on the 7 zip, select Extract here. You can now delete the 7 zip file. Inside our SSE Edit file are the applications we need to add to MO2. Launch MO2. In the drop down tab, select Edit. Click the plus symbol and select Add from File. Navigate to your newly extracted folder. Inside, select SSE Edit Executable. You can use the applications icon for desktop shortcuts. And let's move it up the list for easy access by clicking the little green arrow. Now click Apply. And let's do the same for quick auto clean. Click the plus and add from file and select the quick auto clean executable. Again, we can use the icons and move it up the list for easy access. Click apply and OK. From the drop down list, select SSE edit and click run. You can close this window now you select your modules. By default, it will select all the mods you have installed with plugins. If this window does not show the plugins you have installed, you have not launched it correctly through MO2. If you right click, you can click Select None and choose the ones you wish to load. Let's select all of the five main files. We don't want to load too many as it can take a while to load them in and you might not even need to use them. For this example, we're going to select Fabled Forests. Check the box and click OK. This will now load these into SSE Edit, which takes time, so be patient. Once completed, the tip box will disappear. Now you will see the loaded plugins. Select Fabled Forests. On the right, we can see our main window. This contains all the information about the plugin. Here you will find the records, the author's name, if they put it in, and the master files it relies on. As you can see, this requires all of the main game files. This will be because it changes all of the areas included as it adds trees throughout the world. Not all plugins will require all of these, but this is a nice way to find out which ones it retrieves data from. Now click the little plus symbol to the left of the mod name and it will expand the mod into the categories of the information it contains. The file header is the one we've just looked at. Furniture. This means that it adds an item of furniture to the game that wasn't there before. In this case, a chopping block with snow. As you can see here, the first column, Skyrim ESM, is the original item. The second column is the new item. If multiple mods change the same areas, you will see extra columns beside this. As you look down the list, a lot of the information is the same in both columns. But as you can see for model, this is highlighted in green. This is because this is the area that Fabled Forest changes from the original files. If we have a look down under the expanded tab, 
you will see that it adds an alternate texture. You can see here the texture it originally used in the game and the new one that's being implemented by Fabled Forests which will replace it. Here you can also see information about its location, size and additional details. We won't go into this too much right now, but we will look at it in future. Under Static, this is a list of static items that this mod includes in the game. In this case, static items are not to be interacted with in-game, but they are purely visual. As you can see, Fabled Forests adds a number of alternate models to things such as the log piles, and the hollow logs. You can see here the original information from the Skyrim ESM and under Fabled Forest you will see the changes that it makes. If we expand the columns a little bit we can see that it replaces the model textures. Under Texture Set you will see that it adds two new textures to the game. Because there is no Skyrim column here, these were not included in the original game files and are additional. Under Tree, you can expect this one to be quite busy. This is a list of the models of the trees that Fabled Forest changes. This isn't one tree specifically, but an entire model of tree throughout the Tamriel world. As you can see here, it still uses the same base ID, but changes details about it. Information such as the trunk flexibility, branches, size, and various object bounds. The original tree pine forest is still the same one used with fabled forests, but it's altered so it will appear and be located differently. As you can see, each of these IDs refers to a particular model and the changes that Fabled Forest makes to it from the original. If we then collapse these categories, now let's look at the World Space category. We see the different models that are being replaced and changed overall, but World Space contains each individual tree that is changed in the game or added. As you can expect, there'll be a lot of these. Now this is subdivided quite a few times, firstly by Tamriel and Solstone. If we expand the Tamriel category, it will be subdivided into different blocks. Within these blocks will be further sub-blocks. As you can expect, there's a lot of area to cover. If we expand one of the sub-blocks, we can see each individual tree added to that area. Then we can see how many of these were placed and where they were placed. If we select the placed object, it will show us. As we can see, these particular ones have been increased in size. They have also been moved slightly in their location, which is at the bottom of that window. Let's take a look at this tree in particular and let's see if we can change its size. If you double click on the scale under Fabled Forests, a pop-up window will appear. Yes, I'm absolutely sure. And then you will be able to change the value. Let's change it to 1.01. .01, and you can see here, it has now become bold. It's bold because it's been changed. This means that these changes are not yet saved. But you can easily locate which changes have been made. To save, you can click the three bars at the top and click Save. Select the plugin to overwrite and click OK. This will apply your new changes to that mod. It is important to know that if you are changing other people's work, this is strictly for your own personal use. Should you want to remove a tree entirely, for example, right click and you can select remove from the list. It's a little daunting at first with so much information, letters and numbers listed across the screen, 
but as you break it down into sections, you'll realize that it's very well laid out and quite easy to follow once you get the hang of it. Should you wish to make your own patches for mods you've got installed or choose a conflict resolution yourself, SSE Edit is the way to go. We will go further into the use of SSE Edit in another video. Perfect time for a brew.